Don't. Okay, it's recording. Okay, hello wait, everybody. Wait. Okay. okay. Hello everybody. How are you? Um, I've been meaning to do this video for a long time, like a year ago, but I've been procra procrastinating. So I'd like to do a quick video today about how two prophecies are being fulfilled right now. These are two end times prophecies. The first one is uh, 2 Thessalonians 2.4. Oh, gotta get these glasses on to see this. So, 2 Thessalonians 2.4, as you know, if you're familiar with the Bible, and this would be for people, this video is kind of for people who are familiar with the Bible and or at least people who can see that there are quantum changes happening in our world right now. Um, so, the prophecy I want to talk about is 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, uh, where Paul is talking about Christ, the day of Christ cannot come until we see that the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And I want to return to that scripture, but I'd like to say that this is happening right now. The Antichrist is, is, is in the temple on one level and is playing God. And I'll explain that. You know, there's a, a physical fulfillment of a prophecy, and then there's other levels of fulfillment of a prophecy. And this, this prophecy is being fulfilled in the spiritual, and it's manifesting on earth currently right now. Um... The second prophecy I'd like to talk about is Revelation 13, 6, where it talks about the beast that comes out in the final days. The beast opened its mouth to blaspheme God and those dwelling in heaven. So I want to talk about how that's happening. Wait, and hold on. Are you saying the scripture name? Revelation 13, the, 6, I before did. Before you say the quotes, are you saying the... Yes, I am. Oh, you are. Because I'm... Yeah, Revelation 13, 6. So, okay, so let's go to the scriptures that have been changed in the Bible. If you are a reader of the Bible or a follower of the quantum effects or Mandela effects, you know when you realize that in the last couple of years, the Bible has been mysteriously changing as well as some other things uh, in our world. Um, logos, people's names paintings, different things have been, been changed. Um, things have been appearing that should not be in this time, but they seem to be from another time. The body has been changing. So on a quantum level now, there's somewhere, someone, something has been given access to our earth to begin to make changes in our, in our 3D world here, our matrix, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to do more of a video about that. But anyway, so we have Bible changes, and we have Bible changes that are reflecting the voice of the Antichrist, in my opinion, because they seem uh, pretty blasphemous. So let's start with, I'm going to go through about six quick examples. One is Zechariah 10.8, Zechariah 10.8, which now says, uh, in the King James Version, I will hiss for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. Um, I will hiss for them. God doesn't hiss. God is not a snake. We know who the snake is. So that seems like a switcheroo right there. That's, that's what I would argue. Then let's go to Exodus 33, 23. And we now have KJV Bible says, this is uh, where Moses is um, standing before God and he sees the glory of God and God is talking to Moses. He says, and I will take away mine hand and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Thou shalt see my back parts. I don't know. It's a little strange, the wording there. That doesn't sound right. I think it was more like Moses would see his glory, you know. But not so much that he passed away or something. Uh, you guys tell me what you remember about that verse. But it wasn't uh, his back parts. Like his bottom or something. 
So I'm going to argue that that's another change. Okay, third change is in Strong's Concordance now. You have 666. The number 666 is now connected to the name Melchizedek. Um, someone on a YouTube channel called Hillary's Guide to the Impossible is the one that noticed this change. He had been studying the Strong's Concordance and the Bible and the Mandela effect. He was studying the name Melchizedek and he noticed over a period of several days that the number next to parts of the word Melchizedek and Strong's Concordance got changed to 666. Now we all know that 666 is the bad number. It's the number of the beast system in the end. So 666 should not be associated with Melchizedek in the Strong's Concordance because Melchizedek, as you know, is the high priest associated with Jesus Christ. So I'm going to put a link to that so you can look at his video. He explains it better than me. Okay, and then we have uh, 2 Thessalonians 2.4 in the King James Bible. And to me... There's a subtle change here. And you guys can tell me what you think about this one. I can't say definitely that it's so, but something inside me doesn't feel right about the way this sounds and the way that it's worded. It talks about, you know, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Um... The Antichrist, Satan, is not going to show himself that he is God Almighty. Because he's not God Almighty. So I think that wording is a little bit off. You guys can see if you can remember what, what that said. I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, so then we have Hebrews 3, verse 1. Hebrews 3, verse 1 in the King James Bible is now saying... Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. And I'll go to another version and read it as well. The New American Standard Bible, Hebrews 3, 1, Hebrews 3, 1 now says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. How could Jesus be an apostle when the definition of an apostle is the one, you know, the original 12 in the beginning who were with Jesus and knew him personally and now represent him in the kingdom? And then there's, there's apostles today also, but Jesus Christ is not, is not the apostle. He's the Messiah and um, God's only son, the Savior. And by the way, the word Messiah has been removed from the New Testament of the King James Version of the Bible. In case you didn't know. But anyway, so here we have him referred to as Apostle in Hebrews 3.1. I, somebody explain that to me. Okay, Revelation 17.6. Now says, in the King James Bible it says, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. This is John, you know, um having the visions and taken up into heaven, receiving revelation from Jesus Christ and the angels about the last days. He says, I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Why would John, the apostle, who's receiving a revelation from Jesus Christ, have great admiration for this uh, woman drunken with the blood of the saints who had martyred the saints? Um, so that's, that's, that's blasphemous. Why would you say that he, as a saint, wondered with great admiration at this blasphemous, uh, harlot who had killed the saints? That doesn't make sense. So those are some of the changes I'm pointing out. You, and those of you who follow this know there have been hundreds of changes. And, um, those are just some, to me, that reflect the voice of the Antichrist pretty clearly because they're mixing up, they're, they're blaspheming God, as far as I'm concerned, and the saints. Okay, so now I want to talk about the technology a little bit that could be used behind this, these changes, to create these changes, and um, 
how this fits in with the fulfillment of the prophecy about the Antichrist sitting in the temple. Okay, so there's a video done by Anthony Patch. And I'm going to put the link in here. But Anthony Patch deals a lot with the technology and um, final world prophecies and how it's being used and a little bit with the physics of stuff. So he talks about how, you know, some of the technologies we suspect are behind opening portals to allow these changes to be made in our world or opening portals to demonic or fallen angel activities or Satan or Lucifer. It's technology that, uh, you know, has been created here through the inspiration of maybe the fallen angels on the other side. So we have CERN and then we have D-Wave computers. And D-Wave quantum computers. And Anthony Patch talks about how the chip for the D-Wave computer actually is similar in um, architecture and construction to the temple, to Herod's temple. So the D-Wave chip, um, he sees it sort of as a temple that can be used to um, open portals, open up communication to entities on the other side who are attempting to influence Earth and make changes here in our world. I'm not going to go into all the details of how that happens. That would be a long, long video, but I will say that Anthony Patch says in his video that the D-Wave chip is actually designed in a similar way to Herod's Temple. And if you put a copy of it and overlay it over the temple, it fits kind of right into place. It has a similar design in that the, the place where the processing unit is, is very um, protected and barricaded by a very thick wall. And in Herod's temple, the Holy of Holies place where God actually enters, you know, sort of like the control room or the central processing unit, whatever, um, the Holy of Holy place in the temple is really barricaded by very, very thick walls made out of a certain material so that there's no interference in the temple from what's outside of it. And this, this D-Wave chip is designed that way too. These D-Wave computers have to be really protected by a thick wall and also um, kept at a certain temperature um, to keep the integrity of whatever's trying to be processed through them. You know, this is this is what Jordy Rose says. This is what Anthony Patch says. So, you know, they're trying to reach into another dimension with these with these D Wave computers. Um and change things. What was my point? So okay, so the D Wave chip, you know, and also, you know, CERN machine that's opening up these portals to other dimensions, you know, that we're assuming that they are, you know, based on the research that I've done. You know, I've seen evidence of this. Anthony Patch argues it, and you can look into it yourself. But so the, the chip designed like the temple kind of gives, you know, the fallen angels a way to operate in, in sort of like a temple of God where they have this power over our world to come in through portals and make different changes. So that's how I see the fulfillment of the Antichrist or the Son of Perdition is sitting in the holy place, which would be the temple that kind of has controls over man's world. And, um, and blaspheming God, because I think they're using these open portals and this technology to make these changes in the Bible that are blaspheming God's. God, and as well as, you know, there's changes in paintings, like Michelangelo's paintings that you can look at that seem blasphemous now, you know, in relationship to um, who God is and everything. So anyway, I'll end this video here. You know, there's so much more to say. I want to talk more about uh, the mysteries, uh, what, what's happening with this Mandela effect and other stuff. But I'll end this here, so I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.